maybe this actually wasn't covered, um, but the mobile app has been renamed. Um, so it's now just Moodle. Um, it's simple. Uh, I think we've still got the old app around somewhere. Um, so uh, if you still have an old phone that you're using, uh, you can still download the old version and it works fine. Uh, okay, so the navigation has been simplified. Um, apparently it was pretty complex before, or semi-complex, but uh, a lot of hard work has been put in to uh, make that more presentable, uh, easier for the students. Uh, I think it's also been um, modernized as well. Uh, so yeah, good, good job by the development team there. Um, it's uh, compatible with uh, Moodle 3.5 at the moment. Um, I think it actually was released, like the most recent version uh, is 3.5.2. Uh, that was released on the 10th of September. Uh, important uh, date. It, so if you have an older version of Moodle, uh, the mobile app won't work. Uh, you need to have uh, 3.1 and onwards. So uh, if you are still using uh, 2 point something, then you need to upgrade to get this thing to work. We have the desktop app. Um, it is very similar to the mobile app, um, except it's just been stretched, basically. Uh, I think everything else has been covered by Martin. Yeah, OK, good. Uh, yeah, no internet, no problem. So as mentioned before, uh, you can download all the resources onto the app and then take it away, uh, complete it there, come back, syncs back up. And everything's great. Um, I was talking to somebody earlier at the conference uh, who unfortunately isn't in this room, um, but they uh, work in Indonesia and uh, many people don't have an internet connection. Uh, and so it's a, a great way to download all the information and they can go off and complete their assignments or do their quizzes. And um, then they just have to come back at some point and sync it back up. Uh, and they can get their remote education done that way. So um, this is a great aspect of the mobile app uh, and highly recommend it if you're in a similar sort of situation. Um, at the moment, uh, if you're a student, this is brilliant. Uh, you know, everything that you need to do uh, and that you can do on Moodle, you can do on the mobile app. Uh, teachers, on the other hand, uh, don't have all of the functionality, um, but if you're looking to sort of uh, assess the information that the students have provided, uh, then you have uh, that ability uh, to go through and, uh, well, basically mark and assess uh, what students have done. Uh, oh, I think I'm actually <laughs> a bit behind on my slides. Sorry, next one. Okay, so. Uh, you can get this on the major stores. Um, if you've got an Apple or uh, an Android device, you can just go to the store, download it from there. Um, you can also get the main uh, desktop application for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, so that's available there. Branded app. Martin already uh, went into his full salesman uh, spiel. Um, absolutely, you can you know, get it branded specific to your organization. Uh, it, yeah, means that you can skip having to throw in the URL every time. Uh, it looks a bit more professional. Uh, we offer support um, associated with that. Uh, I think it's uh, guaranteed maintenance for a year or something like that. Um, and all of this money we use, we just reinvest back into the development of the mobile app to just make it better uh, in the future. Uh, what's next? So, uh, usability improvements. Uh, we've got a great team of UX experts that are interviewing people to uh, try to make the whole uh, user experience less intrusive. Uh, yeah, they've they've put a lot of work into it, um, and so. You'll be able to see these changes in the like from the next release onwards. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, 3.1 LTI support already been covered. Um, showing blocks in the new interface uh, that'll be fun. Um, I know that with 
blocks I'm working on, uh, it'll be good to have those uh, available in the mobile app so that uh, you know it can be used there. So yeah, this is creating content for an actual mobile device. Um, obviously, there's a, a massive difference between the real estate that you have available on a mobile and what you have on an actual normal desktop. So these things should be taken into consideration when you're actually creating your course. Uh, you also have um, additional things like uh, sensors and uh, other bits and pieces that uh, just sort of enhance or can enhance the experience uh, that the students have when they take your course. So. Uh, the general gist of what I'm trying to get to is perhaps plan your lesson to use uh, to be used on a mobile rather than um, uh, like uh, from a desktop machine. Uh, so, ah, what I might touch on is sort of an emotional connection that people tend to have with their mobile phone. Um, how many people here have a mobile phone? Yeah. Uh, does anybody keep their mobile phone next to them when they go to bed? A few people. Uh, next question. Now, if, you, if your phone goes off, like has a message or somebody calls, do you immediately pick it up and have a look? Or do you go, oh, I'll get to it in the next hour or so? So, yes to immediately. And how about uh, sometime later? Yeah. yeah. Well, more people than I expected getting back to it later. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people, especially uh, younger people, have like get uh, sort of immediately interrupted uh, by uh, the mobile sort of going off, and so uh, this causes sort of disruption, which should be kind of planned uh, when people are actually taking courses um, remotely, because you know you're not, they're not there in the classroom; they haven't switched off their phone. They're sort of uh, in the process of doing whatever it is and then they can just sort of immediately get uh, distracted from what it is they're doing. Uh, right, so I think I just covered content creation here. Um, but just a, a little bit more. Um, try to keep everything sort of standardised. Uh, make sure uh, you're using the same sort of uh, header types, you know, like maybe... Um, Oh, does anybody know HTML in here? I probably don't want to go into too, too much detail, but um, to simplify that, you know, if you've got a big heading uh, on uh, to start off with, make sure that every subsequent uh, page starts with that big heading, and like keep the format similar uh, all the way through, so that it's, you're not uh, distracting the student as they're making their way through your content. Uh, yeah, keep it simple. So don't, don't make it too complex. Um, if you can uh, minimize the amount of information, um, you might have actually noticed with my slides, there's not much actually up here to look at. Uh, the idea is hopefully that you might focus on me instead and not the, uh, not the slides. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you can keep it simple, uh, put minimal amount of information on, like in small little bite-sized digestible chunks. That's, uh, we found the best way to sort of handle translating information on a mobile device. Um, images, yes. So uh, one of the things with images is uh, uh, by default, I think, on the desktop, uh, they uh, auto resize. Um, but on the uh, mobile app, you actually have to specify this sort of image responsive uh, tag to get the uh, image to show full size and then give you a magnifying glass that allows you to sort of pinch it or expand it to get a better look of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, with, with the images, uh, because it's a mobile device, you want to be sort of conscious of the fact that uh, somebody has to download this image, uh, and so bandwidth could be an issue. Um, so in these situations, if you can greatly reduce how big it is, you don't want to take like a, a five or six megabyte picture and then just sort of slam it on there and have it uh, resized 
on the page when you you could do the same thing with uh, something that's only maybe two or three hundred kilobytes. So um, yeah, keep that in mind as, when you're uh, creating your images. Also, maybe you know crop them just to the area that you want to sort of uh, focus on. Uh, ah, yeah, one of the interesting things, uh, and not really fully supported by Middlecore, but uh, you can create, say, a choice uh, activity, uh, and then if everybody actually has a device in the audience uh, with small hacks, uh, you can actually get live polling working and uh, you know, actually interact directly with your, with your students. Um, I have a link somewhere, unfortunately not on this slide, but if anybody's interested in uh, trying to play around with that, I'd be happy to, happy to shoot you a link, um, and then you can try the code out yourself, see how that goes. Uh, oh, I'm off again. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So that, that was related to this slide, back to this slide here. Um, Okay, so make sure that you've got the right uh, type of file types. Uh, a lot of devices only uh, support um, specific file types. Uh, if you go, well, yeah, you, you want to sort of keep it to JPEGs or PNGs or uh, GIFs. So, yeah, if you've got a, a photo, then a JPEG is your best uh, uh, solution to go with there. If you're using an image, then um, a PNG is the way to go. And if you've got small moving images, then go with the GIF. Uh, same goes with uh, uh, video and audio. Um, audio, uh, obviously, MP3 is the best way to go. Uh, and audio, something like MP4 or MOV or something like that. You know, something that um, the students will actually be able to view. Um, yeah. so. One thing you might want to consider is uh, creating quizzes. Uh, quizzes are great for um, uh, doing on a mobile device, especially um, with the drag and drop, though it becomes less of a drag and drop and more of a uh, tap and place, uh, but that works quite nicely on the mobile. Um, something where you don't have to do a lot of typing on the phone. Um, typing on the phone uh, gets kind of cumbersome, uh, so maybe steer away from essays, and if you have to, maybe just short Short questions. Um, yeah, so I briefly uh, talked about this. Uh, you have um, all, the, all this additional technology on your phone. So uh, you've got maps, it allows you to uh, go to different places. This can be sort of incorporated into, into your lessons um, with geolocation and stuff like that. Um, you've also got uh, like compasses and uh, like gyros and stuff inside your phone. Uh, I'm not sure that's fully supported, but you know, this is the way that we're heading in, in the future with our education, and so um, it's something to just sort of keep in the back of your mind. Uh, yeah, most of the communication tools uh, will uh, trigger notifications. Uh, so you know, if you need to get your uh, students' attention, um, yeah. Uh, as I said, they can be disruptive, but on the other hand, you can get that immediate information to your students. Um, yeah, just uh, just make sure that students know uh, about applications that they may additional applications may need, like uh, Big Blue Button. Um, you know, if they have to download it, then they may actually miss the call that they're trying to get into. So yeah, that's the general mobile learning strategy. Uh, hopefully, that's somewhat interesting or relevant, um, and we'll leave it there.